One of my favorite compliments I get about the story behind book is that people love reading it in the bathroom. At first, people seem embarrassed to tell me this, but in the introductory chapter of the book, I put a PS at the end that says, I won't be offended if you read it in the bathroom. So in case you want to bring the book into the bathroom, or you just want something to think about for those awkward moments you find yourself in a stall without any reading material, this episode is for you. You're listening to The Story Behind, the extraordinary history of the ordinary. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is The Story Behind Toilet Paper. Ah, I bet you never really wanted to venture to think about what humans used for toilet paper before the rolls we have today, right? So if you're a bit squeamish, this might be a good time to skip ahead. Okay, you still with me? The first recorded use of toilet paper was in China around the mid-9th century. By the 1300s through the 1600s during the Ming Dynasty, soft fabric was cut into squares for royalty to use. But outside of China, before the first recorded usage, Romans used a sponge on the end of a stick soaked in salt water. And while you might be thinking, that doesn't seem so bad, you should know that back then, toilets were communal and there weren't such things as stalls. Toilets at the time were long marble benches with a hole cut in the bottom and another for the sponge stick to go through. Oh, and the sponge stick was then placed back in the bucket of salt water for the next person to use. During the Middle Ages, those who weren't nobility used straw, hay, or grass. But what about those who weren't near straw or grass, like sailors? Well, let's just hope you had some old rope lying around because that's what they used. Those with money had a better selection of materials to choose from, like members of French royalty who used lace. Not everyone was as fancy as the French, but perfumed wool was used by those who could afford it. But you have to hand it to Americans for their ingenuity. If you weren't using corn cobs, which was common, you were probably using newspapers or one of the most popular things to use, the Sears Roebuck catalog. Sears Roebuck, as well as the Old Farmer's Almanac, realized people were doing this and even punched a hole in their publications so that they could be hung on nails in outhouses. Side note, if you ever want a fun internet rabbit hole to fall through, check out the history of the Sears Roebuck mail order catalog and how it undermined the Jim Crow era in the South since it made it easier for former slaves and people of color to purchase things by mail or over the phone without having to deal with racism in local stores. Joseph Gaiety is credited with inventing what we know of as modern-day toilet paper in 1857. He used hemp paper and added aloe to it. He was so proud of his invention, he put his name all over it and marketed it as a good way to prevent hemorrhoids. The problem was people were used to getting catalogs or old farmer's almanacs or newspapers, which they could get much cheaper than Gaiety's product. For years, toilet paper was considered a medical product. And it wasn't until two brothers named Clarence and E. Irvin Scott started marketing toilet paper on rolls instead of the sheets it was originally sold as. They sold their toilet paper to hotels and drug stores, and it became a steady product. But the Scott brothers didn't put their names on it until a little over a decade later. And yes, this is the same Scott brand from toilet paper we know today. In fact, asking for toilet paper in a drugstore was considered taboo. In 1930, a German company called Hackle began marketing their toilet paper with the tagline, ask for a roll of Hackle and you won't have to say toilet paper. Hoberg Paper Company out of Wisconsin distracted customers from the purpose of their toilet paper by giving theirs a feminine logo and putting a beautiful woman on the package. It's company lore that somebody remarked at how charming the packaging was, and the company rebranded to Charmin. During the Great Depression, they also marketed a more economical four-pack, which helped the company survive. But whatever you do, don't squeeze the Charmin. It does smell nice, huh? It's so soft. But you gotta resist it, honey. You gotta be strong like us guys. Right, Whipple? Oh, Whipple. The The marketing of toilet paper is really interesting to look at, especially during a time when it was so awkward to ask for it. Over the years, the stigma wore off, and toilet paper was common joke fodder for comedians and entertainers, until Johnny Carson inadvertently caused a panic in 1973 when he read aloud an article talking about a possible shortage of toilet paper. 
Unfortunately, the article he was reading from was about commercial grade toilet paper, not consumer grade like we buy off the shelves at stores. But he failed to mention that part, and over the next few days, grocery stores were unprepared for the rush of people who stockpiled toilet paper and cleared shelves completely. Grocery stores had to ration their supply until Carson corrected his statements. He was so worried about the panic he had caused, he is quoted with saying, I don't want to be remembered as the man who created a false toilet paper scare. I just picked up the item from the paper and enlarged it somewhat. (laughs) There's no shortage. And if you ever wonder how much toilet paper to stock up on if a shortage were ever to happen, the average person goes through 100 rolls of toilet paper every year. Nowadays, toilet paper isn't taboo to talk about at all. In fact, in my old workplace, if somebody went into a stall when someone didn't change the toilet paper roll before them, it caused about 30 minutes of my coworkers and I wondering who could possibly be so primitive. But in countries outside of America, the use of toilet paper is actually slowly decreasing. More bidets and air dryers are being installed in bathrooms. Toilet paper production prices are increasing as well, meaning the cost of toilet paper continues to increase. But if you're wondering if the debate over whether toilet paper should go over or under will be solved in this episode, here you go. The original 1891 patent for toilet paper states that the roll should be hung over, not under. But as our house has found out, if you have cats or toddlers, sometimes it's just easy to suffer with putting the toilet paper under, so we won't have a shortage of toilet paper. The role of Johnny Carson was played by Chris Nessie from the House of Ed Tech podcast. Information for this episode was sourced from The Washington Post, Mental Floss, Boxed, and more links which can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. This week on Trivia Tuesday in the Story Behind Discussion Group on Facebook, Moxie posted in Iceland, the Yule Cat eats people who didn't get new clothes for Christmas. Moxie, by the way, hosts Your Brain on Facts, another podcast trivia buffs will love and I'll be on a future episode, so go check them out. John posted there are 50,000 shoulder replacements done every year in the U.S. He just got his a few weeks ago. Hope you're healing well, John. If you'd like to talk about trivia you pick up during the week and have it read on the show, join the Story Behind discussion group on Facebook. This episode was brought to you by the Story Behind executive producers who support the show through the Patreon page at patreon.com slash thestorybehind who also get access to full scripts of episodes before they go live and get a bonus episode every month. The full list of executive producers can be found at thestorybehindpodcast.com slash executive producers. Thanks for listening.